What happens when your job transfers you out of state or perhaps you want to move closer to the family and friends in another area? How are you supposed to find your home if you're looking from another state? That's a great question. Let's take a closer look at eight tips you can use to plan out your long distance move. My name is Andrew Finney and my passion is helping you make sense of real estate. If you need help finding a top agent where you live or if you simply want to drop me a line they say hello, my contact info is below. If you're new here, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel now and like this video. Thank you. All right, my friend, you probably know somebody that has moved out of state or even moved to where you are now from another state. You might be talking to them right about now trying to figure out how did they do it, what was the challenges, and what was the most helpful information that they procured in their long distance move. Well, fortunately, there's eight tips that I can share with you right now that have helped a lot of the people that have moved out of state to Las Vegas, Nevada, and we use them successfully to their benefit. The first tip is to always use a top real estate agent in that area. The reason this becomes incredibly important is that you wanna make sure that you always have the right trusted real estate advisor working with you. It becomes even more important whenever you don't know the area and you need to gain lay of the land to make a well-informed decision where you will be buying your new home. So this process can begin anywhere from six to 24 months in advance. And in practice, what I've done many a times with out-of-state movers and even out-of-country movers is we form a game plan about what's most important to them up front, over the phone, through text, through email, through video messaging, whatever they have available to have that conversation to learn more about what they're looking for in their new home and what's most important to them about the overall area and the overall communities. It could be schools, it could be shopping, it could be distance to work. There's a lot of considerations that need to be thought about here. So having that top-notch real estate agent is going to be massively, massively beneficial to you. So please do your homework, Google the agent, check their online ratings, check their online reviews, and make sure that you have the right top-notch agent for you. Let me give you an example of how this looks by working with a top agent in the local area. When I work with active duty military people or anyone else for that matter moving in from out of state or out of country, one of the things that I always ask is if they have any social media profiles like Facebook. Why is Facebook something that we would want to have on a long distance move? Well, it's very simple. Facebook Messenger, having that app on your phone will enable video messaging and not everybody has an iPhone, so FaceTime may or may not be in there. But all the same, we can video record the house. Now, best practice here is to always have the permission of the listing agent and the home seller before videoing their house. Some people may not like that, so you always want to make sure that when you identify those prospective properties that are your top three of the five favorite homes, that we gain the permission, set a time to go, explain the situation of what's going on, and video record that. Taking it another added layer further is one of the things that I like to do to help people find the right home is to actually video around the neighborhood, going literally up and down every street, showing them what the actual neighborhood looks like and then taking it out one step further and going into the entire community. Between the resources that I provide to buyers and that on the ground video footage, they have found themselves able to make well-informed decisions about the right home in the right location for them. And what's really cool about this is whenever they get here, if they've never seen this home, it's called a sight unseen purchase, which is a thing by the way, a lot of people are doing it these days and there's a special addendum for, just for reference whenever you buy a house sight unseen in a lot of areas. That being said, when we're looking at this and they get here and we meet up to give them the keys to their new home, I always ask them, okay, now shoot straight with me here. How did we do with the video footage in relation to what your expectations of this home were? Are they matching 100%? They always say, yes, Andrew, you know, this was amazing. This was so much fun. I could have never done this with uh, anyone else. I could have never imagined that this was even possible. And I said, that's the beauty of technology these days. And that's how we use it to assist you in between sending you the crime maps of the area, the school links, whatever you need to make a well-informed decision, including area businesses and knowing what's going on. When you take it a little bit further and you provide that video footage, it gives you the opportunity to look at everything in its totality to make the right decision for you. The second tip is to do your own research. When we're talking about doing your own research, remember a moment ago I was sharing with you that your agent could provide a huge amount of resources to you. They could be sending you local crime maps to the area. They could send you city data links for the zip codes or the neighborhoods that you are considering. They can send you you so much different information but when you're looking at doing some of your own research maybe you want to look at lifestyle scores you want to look at livability scores you want to look at walk scores you want to look at whatever kind of things are most important to you maybe you want to check out greatschools.org and take a look and see how are the schools performing in that area maybe commutes important to you so you're checking out the commute time maybe you have a Waze app so that you can start seeing how long is it going to take you to get from point A to point B what's the Waze app going to do for you it's going to obviously let you navigate 
navigate the most successful way and take whatever detours are needed to get you to point A to point B the quickest, right? So there's so much independent research that you can do. Now consider your trusted real estate advisor as your source of resources. Ask them for information and in fact a top-notch real estate agent is going to say, hey, guess what Andrew? I'm going to go ahead and send you over a crime map to our local area. I'm going to go ahead and send you the city data link so that you know what you're looking at. Oh, by the way, you may not know this, but on my website, when you come here, you can actually just simply press click for directions right off the website to drive right to that home. And oh, by the way, it also has the walk score built into the website as well, if that's something that's important to you in your decision making process. Having all these tools at your disposal, knowing how to use them will enable you to make the right decision that's right for you, whether you plan on buying sight unseen, or if you're simply gathering all the information possible for a perspective area you're considering moving. The third tip is to really think about what is your ideal home in your new hometown. The reason this becomes important is because even people in a single city oftentimes have not challenged themselves mentally to go through the exercise to ask themselves, how many bedrooms do I realistically need on the minimum level? Same thing for bathrooms, same thing for square feet. Then they need to consider, hey, do I want a one story, a two story, or does it simply not matter? Do you want a gated community, a guard gated community, or does that matter? Do you want an HOA or no HOA community? Does it even matter? You've got to put yourself through the paces and really get clear on what's most important to you in your new home. One of the questions I always, always, always ask people here in Las Vegas, Nevada when we first are having a conversation as a prospective home buyer that I'm going to work with is how long do you plan on living there? The reason that changes the whole dynamic is if your game plan is to buy a home and be there for three to five years, sell it and move up, then we know that we need to find a home that's within your budget that you can realistically afford and that's going to make you the happiest to live in but with the mindset that in the future you're going to be looking at upgrading your house. Now if your thought process is I want to find my forever home, well if we're going to find your forever home we need to know what your forever home looks like so that we can go back and design a customized home search that's personalized right down to your last need. We want to make sure that we're delivering on your expectations and the best way to know that is to begin with the question, how long do you plan on living there? And based upon that, then that should also in your own mindset be able to answer a lot of the other questions about what's truly important to you in your new home and what's not quite as important to you in your new home. Go ahead and jot it down on a list between a one and five star rating about what's most important to you where five is an absolute must and one is I can really live without it. When you do that and you ask yourself these questions and if you need to quite literally get sticky notes and put them up on the wall, it'll help you gain insight and perspective into the right kind of home for you. A few other questions that you might want to consider is do you want to live in an urban area or a rural area? What style of a house do you want? Do you want to live close to the action of a city and have that nightlife and that amenities around you? Or do you want to live somewhere with that maybe walking to the library or walking to a nearby park is important to you, whatever the situation might be for you? How important is outdoor living for you and what size of a yard does that look like to you? If you have kids, what kind of schools do you want your kids to be in? Do you want them in public? Do you want them in charter? Do you want them in private? And where are those schools located within the area that you're looking for in your new home? Being clear on that up front will help you plan this out and if you don't have kids but are planning on having kids if this is going to be a longer term property let's say somewhere between 7 and 12 years then it's definitely a consideration if you plan on having kids within that time frame especially for the pre-k and elementary schools. Essentially what you want to do here is break down all the questions that are most important to you and use that one to five star scale and yes quite literally break out those post-it notes and make it happen to gain insight and perspective into what's most important to you. The fourth tip is deciding on how much you're willing to spend on your new home. It's important to gain clarity on that up front and be realistic with the local marketplace. There's sometimes people move from the Midwest or they move from back east and some of the southern states and they move to Las Vegas and so like, Andrew, oh my God, you guys have like no yards in Las Vegas. It's a desert. Why isn't everybody on like an acre or two acres of land? It's a great question. Consider the resources that we have available and the scarce resources that we have available here as it pertains to water, right? And consider the cost of going and making all those homes really really big and stretching them out. If you start thinking about that it might start making a little bit more sense why we generally have smaller lots for our home and not every home is going to be this massive big gigantic lot where when you go to like the southern states or you go to the midwest maybe $300,000 buys you four or five acres with that home that might be 2,500 3,000 square feet whereas $300,000 in Las Vegas Nevada may buy you a one or two story home three beds two baths and about 1,600 square feet with a 
fairly moderate, respectable size lot. That being said, real estate changes state to state and area to area. It's important to know and be realistic with the price range that you're setting for yourself in relation to the current market averages. What's a good spot that you could get this information? A good source is going to be your trusted real estate advisor that you have identified to be your local contact and guide you into the right home by what's most important to you. You can ask your trusted real estate advisor, hey, what's the average sales price of a home in anywhere USA? They're going to be able to say, hey, in anywhere USA, the average sales price is about $350,000. And your follow on question may be, so what does that look like exactly? Your trusted real estate advisor say something like, hey, you know, that's a great question. What that looks like is a three bed, two bath home on a tenth of an acre with about 16, 1700 square feet. Is that what you had in mind? And then you can follow on from there with any of the other questions that are most important to you. Gaining clarity on this and being realistic and knowing what that average sales price is in an area will set you up for success by knowing realistically how much you're looking at to spend on your new home. When you have that up front, please be realistic as well with your own expectations. There is a difference between max approval amount and true affordability. I would implore you to please always make a fiscally and financially responsible decision that's best for you with the following criteria in mind. When you're considering your max approval amount a lender might have given you compared to your true affordability, please remember that whenever a mortgage loan officer provides you with a loan pre-approval letter, that they're looking at your gross income. In other words, that amount of income that you earn before taxes. If you're on the maximum side, let's say maybe a 50% debt to income ratio, we're gonna have a little bit of a trick because what happens if you're paying 20% of your gross gross income to Uncle Sam. If that's the case, can you realistically live on 30% of what remains? Only you can answer that question, but please definitely consider it as you're making the right decision, the right budget for the right home for you. The fifth tip is to take a trip to your new hometown. The reason that you want to take a trip to your new hometown seems a little bit obvious. You actually want to put your own feet on the ground, if at all possible. Now this backs up to the first tip that I had with working with the top real estate agent in the area because they can video the area for you, which would be massively beneficial in the cases that you may not be able to visit. But if you have the luxury and privilege to visit the area that you're going to be moving to, please do so and go ahead, scope it out, drive the different areas. By now you probably have a few top homes in mind, you might say, hey, I really like these three homes. I'm sure I'm going to buy one of these three homes. But when you get there and you drive through those areas, they may or may not be exactly what you expected in its totality, the neighborhood, the community, the area. It might be picture perfect or it might be a nightmare in your mind's eye. Either way, what's the best way to know? Taking your trip and scoping out the area. It'll also give you a wonderful opportunity to meet up with your trusted real estate advisor if you have not physically met them at that point. We would welcome that opportunity to meet with you and plan this out together. The sixth tip is to keep an open mind. Now this is where it's really important to go back and realize what kind of real estate is in that city. What kind of things are normal in that city for homes? It's so much different. If you take somebody from like New York City and you move them into Las Vegas, their number one thing they're going to say is, oh my God, you guys actually have lots. We actually have outdoor space over here. That's awesome. And we like that. Oh, and oh my goodness, these prices are like a third the cost as they are in New York. Well, yeah, we're in Las Vegas. And welcome to Las Vegas, baby, right? And we have a good time. So, I mean, it's so much it's so much fun whenever we have people coming in from these different areas across the country with what they had in mind whenever they moved here. Now, again, going back to somebody that might be coming out of the Midwest or maybe the Northwest or perhaps the Southern states in the United States, when they come to Las Vegas, it's sometimes gonna be a perfect match. It's sometimes gonna be a little bit of of an adaptation and that's where the open mind comes to be. So is true when you're looking at moving to a different state if you're moving out of the Las Vegas area. Anywhere that you go is going to have a different type of real estate. So having an open mind to the realities of that type of real estate, the prices associated with the current market trends, indicators, and conditions, and also knowing how far your dollar is going to go are extremely important. Please keep an open mind throughout the process and you'll be setting yourself up for success. The seventh tip is to choose the right moving company for you. Now, fortunately, in today's day and age, we have some really cool options. Not only could you do it yourself with a U-Haul move or one of these other places that you can rent moving trucks from, you can hire professional moving companies like Mayflower or any of the other ones that you might have in mind, United, whatever your pleasure. Or you even have things called pods, and the pods are super cool. Please make sure that you're planning out your budget not only for your down payment, your buyer closing costs, and the costs associated with purchasing your new home, but also the costs that are going to be associated with moving your personal belongings to your new hometown. And of course, please make sure that you're Googling the moving companies that you have in mind to check their online ratings and reviews 
to make sure they're the right one for you. And the eighth tip is to remember to have fun. You're buying a new home. You're moving to a new area. This is a new adventure in your personal journey. Let's make sure that it rocks and that you have a great time. And please keep in mind, this is all about you having a lot of fun moving to your new hometown. Okay, so with those eight tips under your belt, now let's talk about how to find the best neighborhood for you and the steps to take to plan out a long distance move. Looking forward to your next conversation. We'll see you in a few. Thank you.